Good morning everybody. Welcome to the second of my free marketing masterclasses for small business owners. Um, this one should arrive in your inbox first thing on Wednesday morning. It's Tuesday morning today so I'm, I'm on a mission to get all this done um, so I can crack on with some other things. We're good doing at home probably like the rest of you. There's lots of gardening and all sorts going on. Delighted to say the weather seems um, nice and bright again. It's a little bit cool isn't it but uh, at least it's not raining. Well not yet. Anyway so let's crack on. Today's class is all about messages, getting your messages out there. Um, and now there's lots to talk about. There's a lot of really good content. So please make sure you've got a notebook ready because uh, hopefully that you'll have lots of ideas. Uh, for those of you who um, haven't uh, met me before, I'm Vanessa Lanham Day. I've run my business on track marketing for the last 32 years. I've weathered the storm of two recessions in the past, um, one in the 90s um, and the, the 2008 one. And I do know what you do during those difficult times has a big impact uh, on what you do afterwards. You know, in my specialist subject, business growth, um, I mentor people, um, I speak a lot about it, I coach small business owners to do marketing, so I hope I have something useful to say to you. Um, I'm famously known as the butt kicker because I am very good at helping people get stuff done. Um, if you feel the need to email me and tell me what you're doing, uh, I would, I'm always delighted to respond. Um, obviously, if hundreds of people do it it'll take a little bit longer but I always guarantee I will reply so if you need a little bit of accountability please do use me um, we're all in this together as they keep telling us and if I can help a little bit I'm really happy uh, to do that so when the shit hits the fan am I allowed to say that on a non-public TV but when the shit hits the fan you really do need to keep your customers close I mean I absolutely learned that in the previous two recessions you know when there's that terrible fear that customers are going to start walking through lack of money through fear all sorts of things you know your opportunities to you know, bring them in close and make it a lot harder for them to leave uh, for reasons of loyalty because you keep reminding them about the great stuff that you can do with them that they will want to stay with with you for the long term it's your job to make that happen it's not their job to come and find you it's your job to to make sure they are absolutely clear about all the benefits of, of staying with you and if you don't communicate they're not going to know that um, which is why you, know, you absolutely have to protect that customer base because it is going to be harder to find new business right now it's not impossible actually and for some businesses that they're going to find it quite easy I'm, I'm guessing anybody in groceries right now is, is having quite a good job um, of finding new customers but you can certainly there are new customers out there if you're thinking uh, and innovation is right but most importantly protect and keep the customers you've got um, um, to keep them with you even if maybe they're not spending as much or maybe not be spending anything right now but you want them there for the end of all this so really really important to protect um, your, your current customers um, but of course yes finding new customers imp is important particularly if there are going to be some gaps appearing um, in your cash flow so that innovative thinking about how can I do this for someone else absolutely vital um, trust is absolutely critical because in these difficult times you need to be the person they really will trust to deliver uh, it's a, it becomes very personal uh, and those personal relationships and, and trust I speak a lot to people about uh, marketing funnels people understand the moment a customer has become your customer and you're looking about building long-term relationships. It's all about delivering value, building trust, building relationships. Uh, people often forget those same three things, value, trust, relationships, are equally important before someone's become a customer. They are much more likely to buy from you if they have that sense they can trust you, they know you, they, they trust you will deliver. Um, so, so that's a really important element of your communications and we will be coming on to this but I, I think the risk at the moment is people are so busy talking about face masks and, and cleaning regimes that they're forgetting those really valuable human messages that are all about you know we're with you guys we're on your side we can help the human stuff um, so really make sure that you, you major on that uh, because the point is if you don't say that to people someone else is going to 
um, and you know if people are being really credible about this and perhaps much more uh, frequent in their communications they are going to slip into your space if there's less bit less business around you know they may all be taking some of yours if, if you're not stepping up um, so that is your responsibility like I say it's not your customers responsibility to come find you it's your responsibility to secure them um, and one of the things I feel really strongly about is this idea that the most important thing about being a small business is the fact that you are small. I often see um, small businesses trying to look big. Um, oh, our customers are, are larger companies, we want to look more like them. But larger companies don't have the specialness of being small. They don't get the opportunity to tell their customers that they deal with the main guy that if they want a line of communication to the guy in charge um, then they can have it a big companies can't offer that they're going to be offering you access to a supervisor or, or somebody in the hierarchy whereas a small business owners you can say the buck stops with me um, this is this is my business I'm passionate about this I guarantee we'll get that done for you that's a really special thing right now um, and so make more of it. Don't be impersonal in the way you communicate, in the way the bigger companies kind of have to be. This is your chance to say, I'm struggling too. It's difficult out there, isn't it? How can we help? What can I do to help you? And that's something that small people can do. Small businesses can do so much better uh, than big businesses. So really exploit that. Uh, relate things to your, your situation at home. Talk about the kids. It's no problem. Like I am today, I'm broadcasting from home, my home office. But if you were sat on your sofa doing this, that would be okay. We all get it. Um, it's fine. You know, if the dog jumps up on your lap or, or the kids decide to join in, it's fine because it makes you human. Don't try to to be a corporation right now. Um, that's not what builds trust and loyalty. People are loyal, loyal to people. They're not loyal to logos. Your content and communication are the most important way for you to gain traction right now. The reality is you can't do much else. Um, yes, if you're sending stuff to people, you can still deliver things to them. But for most people, um, the way in which we interact with customers involves in some way being face to face with them. Um, you know, whether you're selling things to them in the retail environment, whether you're um, in the consultancy or, or business to business world where you're going into offices or having um, it, it meetings with people, it requires um, some kind of contact. Um, whether it's of goods or of people, well that's all gone. So what are we left with? Uh, we're left with the messages you send each other um, and so how you communicate is, is so vital right now that is the way which you can make sure people know you're still around um, so don't underplay it don't think oh I'm not sure how to do it I'm not very good at that or oh I'm sure that's enough I've told them that we're cleaning everything that'll do um, this is the time to up your game um, because you've got time on your hands remember the reason we're doing this is because most business owners have got that valuable um, asset of time in the way that they often don't have now is the time to write the blogs get the social media stuff out there start writing emails and connecting with people in the way that you've always wished you could but you didn't have time um, so really are no excuses right now and yes it's difficult and I know you're educating the kids um, and there's lots to do and there's you, you haven't got your team with you but now's the time to get all, over all of those issues and just crack on um, and communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, because it, the reality is most people won't, that's a fact, I mean I've, I've seen it say, in, in two recessions, most people communicate really badly for stop, um, that they think it's enough just to do what they do and for you to work out the rest. Um, and come a recession, when things get difficult, people retreat, they're fearful, 
Um, they think people won't want to know. So most people will cut back on communications and specifically they'll cut back on marketing that they don't have, won't feel they've got the time, they perhaps have somebody else who does it for them. They may not be able to afford the agency that has helped them, that their assistant who used to do it isn't there anymore. Uh, oh, got to protect the money, there's no money coming, can't spend money. So most people will cut back and bearing in mind I'm a marketing consultant and I've been through two recessions, I promise you people cut back on marketing, it's a fact. Uh, it's people see it as, as an expense, they don't see it as an investment. So in the knowledge that most people are cutting back and you become the person who is building and moving forward, you maybe aren't spending huge amounts, I get the money thing, but there's other innovative ways in which you can um, move forward with your marketing and your communications that don't involve lots of expenditure. If you start to do that, then you're going to be backfilling the void that other people create and that's where your opportunity comes that when this is over, you could have built traction and relationships in the way that others have just failed to do. And, and it is your responsibility to um, take advantage of that opportunity. Um, and, and I'm helping you and, and lots of other people will be helping you. The tools are all there. Um, sitting and doing nothing is not an option if you want to be one of the survivors, one of those 1% uh, later on. It's really key that you understand the questions that your customers are asking. Um, if you talk to any marketing consultant, they will talk to you about customer avatars, really understand who your customer is. And, and I often use the example of small business consultants saying that their client base is SMEs in Surrey and Hampshire, which is a really lazy way of looking at it. Uh, they are not just SMEs, they're often a very critical size there may be you know, people where you know they're likely to have 10 or more staff they might be in a particular type of industry they might be experiencing a particular moment in growth um, if you're an IT consultant that moment where the um, business owner stops running IT and, and they say it's important now to bring in someone else to do that Typically, how many staff need to be available? Are they looking at number of remote staff? You can understand more about your customer if you dive into understanding who you've worked for in the past. And, and more than ever now, understanding the questions your customers are asking. There's a lot of fear out there. They will be worried about stuff, and I'll go through what some of those questions might be uh, a bit later, but understanding not just your customers, but people who could be your customers, people who are in your sector, um, in your niche. What are they fearful of? You know, what are their desires? What are the problems are they facing right now? Because if you can come up with answers to those questions, uh, be an authority, show some leadership in your sector, uh, you are going to start to gain traction where others are avoiding that. You're the one that's saying, this is how you do that. I mean, I'll be showing uh, a little bit of Joe Wicks, um, who's, I mean, what an amazing guy he is. I mean, millions of, of followers on um, on Instagram, but there's the guy who's jumping in and saying, I can help you um, keep your kids fit, keep them entertained, keep you fit, um, do something together as a family. He's stepped into that space. Now, lots of personal trainers could do that locally. Um, and I'm gonna be talking a bit about some personal trainers that they are um, clients of ours um, and, and friends of ours and, and they're people that we work out with. So um, I know them very well and they are doing some amazing stuff right now. Uh, they're not some giant corporation, they're just a pair of guys running a small business in Guildford. Um, and they're showing real leadership. Um, so it's up to you to be that authority. You are not too small to be an expert at what you do. You are an expert at what you do. Um, so exploit that, um, do more with it. So start to think the way your customer is thinking right now. Just swap sides and think about if I was at home and I was experiencing X, what questions, what issues would I be facing? Um, really understand what their questions are, um, what their fears are, and, and also what their desires are. Um, for people who are missing out on going out and, and socialising, their desire is to continue that. So you've got people like Zoom step, stepping into that space. You've got all the pubs who are offering takeaway food. Those aren't fears, but they are desires. And small businesses 
ability to, to step in and go, I can fill that gap, I can do that, is really important. So I'm going to be looking at four um, elements of questions today and a couple of other things. So we're going to be looking at the things you ought to be saying, and you may already have been saying them. Understanding how you're already working um, with customers. How you can respond to their fears and, and questions, what we've just been talking about. Um, the idea of new products, new customers, you know, what opportunities are there for you. And the media you need to be looking at but also about planning ahead. Right now, we have no idea how long this is going for, on for. So just think about you know, what I might be doing now, but what if um, this, this starts to take a bit longer. So let's start off by the things you ought to be saying, should be saying, maybe already have been saying. Well, a lot of this is going to um, sit around the whole hygiene and safety um, arena. That there's anybody that's uh, yeah, for example, we have um, a client who's a gardener um, and he has a team of gardeners. So they're currently still working and he's got some um, discussions going on with staff. Some of them are self-isolating. Some of them um, don't feel they want to work. They're, they have anxieties about working. Uh, that you know, if They're in a van with, with one of their colleagues and what have you. Um, so his job is to say to people, we're still able to work. This is how we're doing it. Our, our, team are coming separately, um, that they won't interact with your home, nobody's going to be coming in, they were in any of you know knobs or doors or anything they touch on the way through they're going to be cleaning those um, and, and this is how we're looking after our staff. So those those things were all um, uh, are all important. Um, how you're currently working. Um, you know, we're, we're closed now, we, we, we're no longer able to take people in the pub or in the shop but we can do click and collect um, and our hours have been limited or whatever it is, the way in which th that um, you are currently able um, to access um, your, your clients. We're working solely online from now on so simple things like changing your out of office message um, we're doing a lot of work with some solicitors at the moment um, and when I email them there is nothing that comes back to me that says um, you know, someone, you know, emails are still being monitored, all our team are working from home, that hasn't come through which I'm surprised about. Um, and of course there are some issues around staff availability if some people are self-isolating um, or, or whatever it may be so there are some factual stuff you need to get out there. And, and the risk you've got with all of this stuff is, is of coming across in this very corporate way um, that it all sounds terribly official and like you're a you know, public broadcaster and that's not to undermine the importance of the message but if you were to say it in a different way and to me it's all about warmth and humanity about we really care about our, our staff this is how we're protecting them and we're protecting you personality you know I'm you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad I'm a mum but you know I'm worried about my, my parents I'm not seeing them talk about the stuff that's affecting you um, and just be really honest about the situation it's really difficult around here at the moment and we're doing our level best and we appreciate we might not be able to deliver you the service you need and I really hope you're going to stick with us um, it's really important to us really value our relationship with you uh, and I think it's back to this notion of being small, that the, we small businesses can say that in a way that other businesses are going to struggle with and, and be authentic and, 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 uh, and real about it. It doesn't sound like some smart copywriter has written it. It sounds like a real human being has written it um, and, and that they mean it and that's really important. So I'm going to be doing some examples all the way through here and just of things that I've seen that I've been impressed with. So as an example, um, Alan Payne, um, I, I actually used to 50% um, own the Alan Payne outlet store in Godalming. Alan Payne are a, a well over 100 year old uh, knitwear brand who used to be based in Godalming. Uh, they moved out to, to Wales and they're now up near Sheffield. Um, but they left the outlet store behind and, and for a number of years I owned that with a friend that's, that's gone now. Um, but I have a great fondness for Alan Payne and James, who I know well, who, who still runs the business. It's an international business. They export all over the world. 
um, and we buy from them still. And I got a really nice email from him recently, so let me just show you that. Uh, this, my glasses are going to be on and off all day today, and if I'm bobbing around, it's because I'm managing two screens. So apologies if there's lots of quick fades in between gappy bits. Hold on. So here you are. Here's the email from uh, from James Allen Payne. So it's come from him. He is you know, the big cheese. It is a you know, reasonable size business. Um, sort of dear community. Would it be nicer if he'd been able to uh, personalise that? I think you know they, there's no reason why they don't know my name. So I hadn't spotted that till just now. So it would have been nice if it said dear Vanessa. Um, and, and that depends on the system you're using as to whether you can do that. But I like this. I do understand there are many more important things going on in the world than clothes shopping. But I wanted to offer my thanks for your continued support and loyalty during these uncertain and difficult times. It really does make a difference to us at Alan Payne. But keeping a close eye on how the coronavirus pandemic develops across the globe as the situation unfolds, we're committed to prioritising the well-being both of our employees and customers. Websites fully operational, carries our whole range, UPS are still working and so forth. So making it it really clear you can still shop with us you can't come into any of our premises but that this is still working during this period of uncertainty we're currently offering an extended returns policy of 30 to 60 days now i think that's a really smart thing to do they're making it easier for people to buy your concern might be if i get the clothes and i don't like them how am i going to be able to get them back there might be some concerns about you getting them to a post office and i'm sure if it went on for longer they they will probably revise that you can shop with this total peace of mind. We pride ourselves on impeccable service, but anticipate deliveries and other queries may take a little longer. So managing expectations, I think that's nice. Uh, just request all communication with the customer services team should be by email. The team are working safely from home and will respond as quickly as possible. So they can make it clear what you need to do. Most importantly, I wish you and your loved ones well. As a family man, I understand how worrying this time is and we need to be there for each other. I think that's really nice. I think that's powerful. I think he's written it brilliantly. Um, and you know, there's a version of that um, uh, for everybody. Um, what else? Oh, so Field of Fitness are uh, the gym we use in Guildford. They are a personal training gym. They moved from one-to-one -one personal training three or four years ago to small group personal training. So they usually through the gym in a given day that they will have two or three groups of three or four people working together in the gym at a time and they have a separate floor where they have classes with up to 12 people. Um, so there's quite a lot of people um, go through the business and they have quite a large community, I say probably about 200 um, local people who pay more, quite a lot more than you would pay for your local gym. So these guys suddenly are unable to offer that gym experience and then not getting people to do the, the fitness that they, so there's obviously a concern for their customers, but if people can't come into the gym and experience um, their product, are they going to say, well, I'm not paying anymore? So you know, the impact on their business could be catastrophic. And I think they have been incredibly impressive. They, in fact, came out last Monday and decided to close the gym, and it was before Boris announced the closure anyway. Um, so they were kind of on the front foot and I think they've come up with some really excellent communication. So again, let me show you one or two of those. So here's the um, email that came out on, um, so this is the first one that came out on, on Monday, say back on the 17th of March. Um, so they decided at that point to stop people coming into the gym. Um, it's a lot of uncertainty. We can only control our decisions and act and actions. Super positive and optimistic. It's a temporary situation, but we can only strengthen the gym and our community long term. We will get through this together. Um, so stay tuned for more information coming your way tomorrow. But it's really what happened next um, has been particularly impressive. So straight away um, on the next morning, as promised, welcome to your Keep Moving program. So what they're doing is providing um, online support um, for uh, all their customers. So, so your new Keep Moving timetable. So boot camps, they've now been cancelled, but at that point they were still running them. Uh, daily Facebook Q&A, um, 
um, and so forth. Oh, G-Flex, so that's a, a flexibility uh, class and Pilates delivered live via Facebook. Um, they've created a new portal uh, for members to access things in touch daily with a workout of the day delivered to your inbox. Um, it's all done on YouTube. Um, they're doing a competition to between the team uh, as to who works out the most. Um, starting on the 23rd, um, everybody got a new um, accountability coach. Um, they even allowed people to come in couldn't do it now but for that week they were able to get people in to the gym and they picked up um, a, a kettlebell, um, a, a stretching band and so forth. Everything was cleaned uh, for you and they gave times to do that. You can talk direct to um, the, the, the main guys, John and Dan, um, and there's a really nice message from them here. Hi Foffers and thank you all very much for your support over the last 24 hours. We've been overwhelmed with the emails and uh, text messages that we've received so far. So thank you very much. Please bear with us. We're going to provide you with a fantastic offline and out of studio service over the next hopefully couple of weeks, being optimistic. Um, we have been seeking advice from our independent uh, alliance of fitness, biz fitness business called the IFBA. Uh, UK active and obviously the government guidelines, but we have a resource that John's going to go through momentarily that will explain all the cool stuff and fantastic exercise opportunities you've got coming up for you. So over to you, John. I'm just going to skip to the end here. That's it for now. We are committed and we will be continually committed to improve your health and well-being. And just remember, we do change lives. Not crying, mate. I think that's really sweet. I mean, John at the end there, I, I know he's devastated by this. Um, you know, the, the two of them have built this business up right from, you know, from nothing, just the two guys uh, doing one to one. Um, and, you know, I know they are devastated and you just saw that it was really human. They didn't edit it out to say, oh gosh, you got a bit emotional at the end. Let's, let's not use that. Um, you know, they're, they're showing that they're going to government guidelines. They're using the, their, their industry um, association to help them. Um, very, very powerful stuff. Um, so we're going to come back to some of the things um, they've been doing later. But it, I think the way in which you do that stuff is really important. Um, and say the manner in which you deliver that information and it's not a one shot it isn't oh we did that uh we got that in the first week we don't need to do that anymore it's got to be a continual update this is an evolving situation just letting people know how things are maybe updating on the situation with your own team um and we say whatever the evolving situation is for you keep telling people keep keep them on board and invite people into your world and to be part of your journey as well. It's powerful stuff. So the whole process of how you're still working with customers is critical. If I don't know how I am to access you, mm -hmm. interestingly, the other day, my husband, Steve, um, we've been clearing out the garage, you know, like I'm sure everybody is, and he um, banged his glasses. He just walked into something and it's knocked his glasses. So they're all and out of kilter. It's not too bad, it's not the end of the world, but it made us have a conversation what would happen if you know if they had broken and we have had nothing from our optician to tell us um, that you know what the situation is. So we went online and in fact it does say on their website there's uh, the nearest um, optician to us in their chain is, is either Chichester or Eastleigh, but there's only one open in London. And I get it, and I'm sure it's, it's a very close contact. They presumably have to all be kitted up. But they hadn't let us know that in advance. It, it required us to, to go looking. Um, and you know, for all I know, there might be a, um, an optician in Godalming that is currently offering that service, and maybe I'd be more inclined to go there. So I think they've missed an opportunity there just to let people know. It, it, you know they could easily have sent an email to all their customers. They have all that data, um, but they, they didn't do that. Um, so just letting people know what's going and continuing that conversation. Um, so you know, I think there are lots of opportunities for innovative thinking. There's a lot of businesses who will have been rejecting the notion of um, online working as 
too difficult, not possible to do. Uh, that's changing. Um, the reason I'm working with solicitors, we have the, the, the potential of a mediation coming up with a, a legal case. Um, and we're being told that can happen online. Um, not quite sure how that's going to work. We've got to find out more about that. Uh, but something that's always traditionally been in this kind of closed environment actually can happen online. And I say it's no surprise that people like Zoom are doing incredibly well um, out of this. Haven't heard too much about Skype. I, I don't use Skype, so I find it a bit unstable. But um, Zoom have certainly um, jumped in and shown people how they can do things. Uh, a lot of people have developed some new online products. Talk a bit more about that uh, later. Um, click and collect. Um, so people like B&Q. Um, and, and now have moved complete to a click and collect model. Um, have pubs doing takeaway uh, and so forth. So I've, I've collected a few um, images of, of things that I've seen. Um, so uh, so Zoom. So here's um, I picked this up on on the internet. But you know if you've never used Zoom, you can have dozens of people um, online all at once. I've upgraded from their basic, which is a free service, uh, allows you to do um, between two people kind of ad infinitum. But if you want multiple people for more than forty minutes, you have to upgrade, and it's eleven pound ninety nine a month, or hundred and you know ten times that, hundred and nineteen pound. Um, um, for a year so you get you know 12 months for the price of 10. Now I don't think that's a lot of money to spend if it makes the difference between you'd be able to continue working and not and if you've got a much larger company that there's a higher level package but I'd be very surprised if most small businesses weren't able um, to, to access Zoom. Um, so yes yeah, so this is from B&Q um, so to make it easier uh, during these unusual times, we now offer contact-free collection. Call your so, so you can buy online and buy click and collect, uh, which you would normally have gone into the store um, and there's kiosks just as you know with their customer services just in the side door and they keep them there. Uh, they're obviously they, they'd want to limit that level of contact. So if you contact the store 15 minutes before you arrive, they will arrange to bring your items to the contact-free collection point in the store car park please only visit the store once you've received an email confirming your order is ready to collect. So that's a really smart way because what we know is the world is doing DIY right now. So they've found a way in which the people continue to work, that they're safe and you're safe, that your fears and, and theirs are, are minimised by doing it in this way. So I think that's a really smart thing. Um, so yeah, so this is back to our um, field of fitness. So this is um, so this is from last Friday. So the boot camps have gone now, but then they've got far more going on in the studio. So they have somebody literally in the studio or on their own. Um, recording direct onto Facebook and it's there obviously if you want to come back to the program later. Um, they also have a pre-recorded uh, workout of the day um, that you can access so I think that's a really smart um, thing to be doing. Uh, it's a pub takeaway you know there's those pubs who've all got the staff um, and food uh, processing and that and they are being seen as that they're being prioritized because they are delivering uh, to people who perhaps um, can't get to the shops who've got um, lots of critical workers it's way provided it's being done safely so this these are some people in um, Shoreham uh, the Duke of Wedding Wellington I just found that one online um, and this is so it's a pub um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about these guys uh, later um, the Star in Godalming, if anybody knows Godalming, the Star is a real beer drinkers pub. They are the, the classic camera um, a club, um, pub. They have dozens of car scales. Um, that they, every pump has got two labels on it. And the one, so the one at the top is the ones they've got on the pumps. And the one at the bottom they have to go downstairs for. Um, and it's a really steep little staircase. So my husband's always very keen to order anything on the bottom line to make them run up and down the stairs. But they have a great community community people are really loyal to them um, so one of the things they're doing they now have a delivery service um, and it's interesting I'll talk a little bit more about some things they're doing um, but the, the loyalty they have got in their community uh, that people will um, start to access this so I just think there's lots of ways in which you, people are doing things and you just have to make it really easy for people to keep working uh, with you and for some of that it's going to be about creating new products and new products for new customers too 
um, interested, so I don't know, again, if people know the Secrets Farm Shop um, in Godalming, a very well-known um, farm shop. The farm shop is still open, but obviously people have some concerns about going into the close proximity of a shop and maybe standing too close to the checkout operator or what have you. Um, my apologies, that if you can hear some strange background noise, the, the bin men have arrived and there's a lot of crashing going on, um, but hopefully that won't transmit itself too much, but I'm going to keep going. Um, but no, what they've done now is create a drive-through vegetable box. So um, they're all slightly different because we bought one the other day, so that they, they will have potatoes and onions in, I think, but they had some had bananas uh, and others didn't. And I got one with purple sprouting broccoli in it, but they're 17 pounds. They're all, it's outside, they've got a big, um, it's sort of gazebo type canopy, and there's a young lady there. It's all contactless that, that you know, she sets it up, puts it down. Um, you then go and uh, pop your contactless um, card onto it and you, you pick your box and take it away. Uh, so I think it's a really smart thing to do. They are, as you can see, this is a Facebook post. Um, so they're advertising it a lot locally. Um, I suspect a number of people are going to access secrets that haven't done before. Uh, they have got, they've got the butchers up there. Um, so it may be you go and pick this up, but then you queue up for the butchers. So I just think that's a smart thing to do. It's solving a, a problem people have got, but it's also um, developing some new customers. This might be something they do in future, who knows? Um, another one I noticed on Facebook, and uh, this is Underwoods. Now, Underwoods are a Godalming based company, um, again, but they sell wholesale to the um, uh, sort of hotels and uh, pub industry. Well, you know, that's a problem right now. Yes, people are doing takeaway, but it won't be anywhere near the volume they've done before. So they're in fact offering uh, meat packs and you can order individual items as well. You can, you can choose from a free list or you can choose one of their boxes and, and they will deliver it to your home. I think that's a really smart thing to do. They may continue that afterwards, I don't know, but certainly for the duration of this crisis, that's a really, really smart thing to do. Um, so going back to the star, we noticed yesterday this has um, come out that they're now doing what they're calling community meals. So in fact, it's um, a ready meal that you can cook or reheat when you get home. So again, so they're preparing it in their kitchens, and so that and they've got a specific um, items you can buy on different days. So it's, it's three pound per portion or um, four for ten pounds. So it's really good pricing. Monday and Tuesday is chili con carne, um, Wednesday and Thursday macaroni cheese, Friday, Saturday and Sunday pork and cider casserole. Now it's possible that will change next week, I don't know, it's the first time we've seen this. Um, but that's going to make it easy for people who are still working, the delivery drivers, the NHS uh, folk, perhaps people who aren't so keen um, on cooking um, for themselves can very easily buy something very affordable. And again, it's introduced them to the star, perhaps where they weren't um, customers before. Um, we picked this up from EasyJet. Now this came out um, sort of in week one. Um, and obviously we know the airline industry has been hit hugely and, and maybe things have changed since since then. I suspect it's got a bit worse, but that what was interesting, and it's almost quite, quite hidden in their email, but they opened up um, their bookings right the way through to February 21, so like 12 months ahead, um, and available at 29.99 uh, one way. Um, and they opened that up at that price, so that was, um, so until the 24th, so I think this came out uh, a few days before that. So it was a really good way for them to try and get some cash coming through the business quickly. Um, letting people know that you can um, have sales conversations virtually. Um, now, for example, my husband's very keen to change our telephone system. Um, we've got a couple of issues, we're struggling to pick up um, our voicemails and what have you. So he'd been thinking for a while um, about changing. He'd arranged to have somebody come uh, to the house last week. Uh, they were insistent that was the only way it could happen. He said, oh, you know, honestly, I don't want to waste your time. We're very small. No, 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 this is how we do it. It'll be fine. Well, obviously it got to a point where we're saying, not sure that's what we want. So we contacted them and they said, well, actually, as of tomorrow, we've made the decision, all of our conversations are gonna be happening online. Um, 
they ended up having a really good sales conversation. In actual fact, Steve found it far less threatening. There was always that feeling almost like pushy salespeople want to get through the door and won't, not going to leave until they've got an order. And that stress was just taken away by having a, a really sensible conversation. They were able to, you know, I think he was asked in advance a few things about the system. Um, so, you know, I think there's lots of possibilities. So I spoke earlier about our gardening clients. So they also do landscape gardening. So, you know, how might they be able to have conversations with clients about their garden? Well, you know, a client can take some photographs or even do a little video walk around uh, and send it to them. Um, you can have a conversation. You can talk about the, um, the parameters of the brief, when it needs to be done by, um, what's possible in the price and so forth. At right now, there's nothing stopping our client visiting that garden and, and not having any contact with um, with, with the customer. Um, so even if perhaps they're not able to finalise the work, they, they're struggling getting hold of materials. So the chance of them actually being able to do it in the current situation unlikely. But their ability to, to bank projects, um, even if they're going to perhaps that final element, it may come a point where they're not able to come into the um, into the garden, but they can at least have um, quotes in principle that just need that final um, conversation. So I think the idea of trying different ways of, of selling and not just saying, oh, we can't do that anymore. Um, because there are people right now, particularly in the gardening world, people are sitting there going, oh God, you know, the kids, you know, know where to play. They keep saying, we'll, we'll do this. They've got time to think about it. They're sitting here experiencing the pain of the garden. They don't, I'm, I'm, if I'm doing this, it's because my garden's out there. You, you can't tell that bit. But if, if they're sitting in their garden and it's just reinforcing the fact they don't like it very much, it's a perfect time to be having that conversation. We have other clients that do um, outdoor play, um, sort of soft play areas. Um, now we've got hundreds of families with children not in school until next September. Um, yeah, I think there's a conversation to be had with people saying, you know, when can we get something in here to get the kids to burn off some energy? Um, so thinking innovatively about how you can do things differently and communicating that. It's not just a case of you deciding it, telling people this is possible because they may go, well, there's no way we can get the garden done now, is there? Well, tell them yes, it is. It's possible. That's your responsibility to tell them these things are, are, are options. You maybe can show them the sort of thing they could get at different prices. Your job to, 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 to help them with that. So I think this brings us now to, you know, I think the biggest opportunity that you have, which is about responding to their fears, their questions or their desires. Because if you do all those other things, you tell them all about the hygiene and the staff and the opening hours and, and the fact that you can talk to them online. Once you've done that, you could argue, job done. Uh, you know, I've, I've informed everybody, and I'll keep updating that. But your opportunity, I think, is about how can you start to be a real leader in your sector? Because you, your customers have got fears, questions, desires right now. And, and if you respond to those, sometimes in a financial remunerative way, you, you, you can answer that question in exchange for money. Maybe it's just in exchange for loyalty, for trust, for um, something you can build on later. Be okay with the fact that you might have to give away some free stuff, some time, um, some energy in order to bank your customers at a later date. It's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's about helping people because their relationship with you will have changed as a result of it. And your option is either you do it or you let someone else do it and let someone else build that relationship. So I want to just look at some of the kinds of questions and this is by no means definitive. There are thousands of questions people are asking, but just here's some of them that you might recognise. And I've got three groups here, so I'll quickly look at each group. So I'm struggling with isolation, um, loss of community and connection. Well, I think we can all recognise that one. Imagine what it's like if you live on your own or you've got two kids and you're in a flat um, somewhere. Imagine how that would be. 
how do I keep the kids entertained? Parents across the nation um, are asking that question. How do I keep me entertained? I suspect Netflix is doing quite well um, right now. Um, I'm anxious, I'm worried, in pain. You know, what about people who are missing their therapy se uh, session? Um, you know, there's higher levels, heightened levels of anxiety at the moment. You know, what if you have got a toothache or, or you know, the chiropractor stopped working? What if your neck hurts? How do I fix that? Um, how do I keep my family safe? Um, you know, we are in this heightened period of anxiety. Um, so just a few um, people who are, are responding to those questions. Um, so I talked earlier about the star in Godalming, um, and they, they are fabulous people. It's a very sort of folksy kind of cup, um, pub, I would guess, um, and they're doing a pub quiz. So I just want to show you just a little excerpt from Sunday's pub quiz. We've now attended both. Uh, they do it on Facebook Live. Uh, I, we also went to another pub quiz that was on Zoom and it got to be a real cacophony. So if you're thinking about anything like this, I recommend the Facebook route and the guy was brilliant at responding to, um, to comments. Um, so he was able to, to keep it going. It could be you have a second person whose job it is to do that bit if, if that's maybe not your skill set. So I was just going to show you a little clip of that. Uh, comment something, comment your team name, comment who you're there with, uh, what you're listening to, apart from me, obviously, what you're drinking. Uh, get in touch, tell us what's happening, and that way I will know that I am not sat here talking to myself. Excellent, we've got a few people creeping in by the looks of it. So I just think that's a bit of fun. He handles it incredibly well. He, he pops up every so often uh, in between rounds to, to grab another pint of his home brew. Uh, and, it, and it's just perfect for, um, uh, for the community. So my gym people, they, they did um, uh, a pub quiz at the same time. So again, let's quickly have a look at their Facebook because I think they're doing this really well. Yeah, so here's the field of fitness um, pub quiz the other day so uh, it's it got to be a bit of a cacophony um, and we had to keep muting people but actually it was really nice for everybody he's one of the trainers here um, but it was really nice to have see everybody and there was a bit of banter and everybody held up their scores at the end uh, that was fun but I think it's just worth having a look at their Facebook so this is a, a private group for, for members and just see so they're encouraging uh, members to um, you know, video themselves exercising um, and people are, you know, saying some. Oh yes, this is a chat that they've got a guy who's doing a bit of mind coaching because again, that's that anxiety thing. Um, the guys do an update every day, um, and <laughs> yeah, some jokes as well. There's always got to be um, some of that. Um, so here's one of the. Um, uh, this this is the program for uh, one of the workouts that they're, they're running through. Um, so there we are, I've got the, yeah, so this is one of the live workouts, um, muted at the moment, but you can see how they are, they are answering lots of questions, not least of which that community one. Uh, how do I keep my family safe? One of my clients um, runs a cleaning business, uh, they're currently putting together a series of videos to tell people how to clean things at a professional standard. I'm sure like me, you're, you're struggling getting hold of um, uh, proper cleaning products at the moment. Uh, and I said to him, you know, I'm assuming if, if hot water and soap is good enough for my hands, there's probably, I don't necessarily need antibacterial to make a good job in my kitchen, but I don't really know how to get the right standards so well that's knowledge they have so they're sharing that stuff so I think it's a really smart thing to do all the people who run local businesses are also families at home worried about their uh, about their kids um, the question on how do I keep me entertained I thought this was an interesting one uh, this is Miranda Sykes um, she uh, plays with a, um, a band that we follow called Show of Hands um, and she did a concert on it was the Saturday before last and she did it live and you know she's a musician a lot of musicians are going to be really struggling right now that they, they're dependent on um, on revenues from, from events but she set up and if you can see this link here um, she set up a, you know if you're in the mood make a donation so it gives a tip jar when you click through it shows as a tip jar 
Um, so that's a really nice way, you know, anybody who is a fan of theirs would have sat down that evening as we did and listened to the concert um, and happy to give her a fiver for her trouble. Why not? Uh, so I think it's a really smart thing to do. Um, so other sorts of questions and why would I put on weight, lose my fitness? Well, obviously we know um, the guys are currently um, doing that really well. And, and we, I spoke about Joe Wicks earlier. Let's, let's get him up there. Yeah, Joe Wicks um, there on Instagram. He's really cute with his little kid here. Hey, we did it, Spinky! Yeah! What did we do, Andy? We did some... And we did some squats. We did it. We had 808,000 people stream. That's live households in the world. My little beautiful daughter Andy got involved and she done some squats. So we see you tomorrow, same time, 9 a.m. Have a lovely day. Lots of love from Joe and Andy. Say bye bye. So yes, Joe Wicks there, um, really doing well. Um, you know, who's going to be? You know, if he wasn't already the go-to guy, goodness me, he will be. But yeah, you know, the guys um, in my gym are doing that locally. Uh, will I have a business after this? This this is one of the questions I'm helping people deal with. I'm worried about money. If you're a financial advisor in any way, then you ought to be having those conversations uh, with people. How do I take advantage of all the additional web traffic? And, and that's a question all of you people um, should be asking yourself. And I was really interested with a, an email I got yesterday from a, a lady I've worked quite a lot with in the past, Tash Conway. Uh, she's got a, a business called Traffic Snap and she sent a really good email yesterday. I'm going to share it with you. So here's um, so pivoting your call to action. That's Tash's email yesterday to all of her um, list. Um, and she talks in a nice sort of human language um, that she uses. But what she's talking about here is that uh, she's talking about insights on Google and, and what have you. Uh, traffic volume generally hasn't gone down in a lot of areas. It will have gone up significantly. Um, uh, if you've got traffic, it's important you capitalise it in the best way you can, which may not be the way you usually do. I think that's an interesting point. For example, if a restaurant still has relevant traffic, then it clearly can't encourage people to come in and book. But if people are browsing and you still want to capture their data, you can shift your call to action to a free dessert voucher when they come in next time. Or you can offer a service you can't deliver right now. Focus on getting people to download a guide and build a relationship with them until you can deliver the service. You get the gist. Pivoting your call to action to help, help you keep marketing and keep engaging. Giving you the best chance of hitting the ground running, running when everything goes back to normal. Um, so I think that's you know, a really smart thing for her to be doing right now because this is her world. Um, other questions people are asking. Um, how do I keep my garden from going to pot you know if you can't get your gardeners to, to come round, or you've just got more time in the garden now so my gardening clients could certainly um, perhaps give some tips on you don't worry about this but you really should be doing that um, it's not going to stop people using them in the future it, you know, when things get back to normal you know we'll our gardener will be back um, how do I make a whatever People have got time on their hands, so if you're in the world where you could show people how to do things, people are interested. How do I deal with an emergency? So what happens if my oven stops working? If the uh, the plumbing goes wrong? If the you know if there's a serious emergency, you know, are you telling people I, I can help with that? Because there's an area where people will they'll move loyalty if they've got an old plumber, but the new plumber's on Facebook saying I can help with these things. Um, I, it's, that loyalty will be very short-lived, and people will jump ship. So if if you're in that world at all, you should be answering that question. How do I teach the kids? Um, a big one right now. We don't have kids, but you know, a lot of our friends do, and it's a serious issue. The, the lady opposite, she's a head teacher, but she's, they've got three boys um, over the age of 11. Uh, there's a lot of basketball going on in, in their front drive at the moment. Um, but uh, one of my old friends, Ali, she runs uh, her whole business is about um, helping uh, kids. Uh, well, be taught at home and, and how to optimise their education. So I got a really nice email from her this morning. I'm on her list. Yeah, here's Ali's email. It's called More Than Two In My Trolley. And, and she starts with a disclaimer to say she always 
stockpiles, toilet rolls. This is an old photograph. In fact, she's always bought in bulk. Um, but the, her, her whole blog is about the fact that when her son was avoiding his revision, he decided to make a construction out of toilet rolls because it was something he could do. He hated the revision. He chose to do something where he felt he had some control. Um, and her point in her blog is we all feel like that at the moment and giving your kids the freedom to have some control over something every day and do something a bit crazy because it's what they fancy is a really good thing to do so really useful blog going out um, to her audience uh, this is answering some of the questions of how do I deal with this um, so a very smart thing from her so it's always about saying to yourself, how can I help? What can I do? What piece of me can I offer? And that could be by way of blogs, videos, it could be eBooks, guides, checklists, um, all sorts of things that you can offer out um, into the marketplace. So I've covered a lot there. Um, sorry if it was a bit jumpy around um, and I hope I've got a little, once I've edited all of this, it, it comes out reasonably smoothly. Um, but so two more things I want to touch on then is media. What media should you be using for this? Uh, well, email is obvious. Um, it's a really easy one. It's cheap and it's free and probably people are a bit more inclined to read certainly interesting emails uh, now than they have previously done, which is a big point in itself make it interesting. People aren't interested in reading dull, boring stuff. Inject it with personality, energy uh, and humanity. Video is really powerful. People have time to watch it. They've always been more likely to consume video uh, than they are text. Um, so, you know, get over and one of my sessions coming up shortly is going to be about how to do video if you've not done it before. Um, text messages, I mean if you've got a list and you're a pub um, and you're doing takeout, I strongly recommend you jump into text marketing and as I said in my last class, you go to YouTube, if you don't know how to do stuff, um, find out. Uh, make sure your website is up to date. Um, quite a lot of people I'm noticing whilst they're sending out one set of stuff, their website doesn't match so there isn't a, a current situation. Um, you know, and book your virtual meeting, you know, sales meeting here or what have you. This is how we're working. These are our opening hours. Um, so I stress you, you make sure you're up to date with that. Your uh, web designer will be pleased with your business. Um, social media. Uh, if you're one of those people who don't really know how to do it or think it's for your kids, well, that's a real get over at moment because social media is huge right now. It's a way you can get into the community forums offer this stuff out if you're say a pub or a restaurant doing uh, food uh, make sure people know about it if you've got ideas for, for helping to educate children or entertaining them get it out on social media um, it's a perfect platform to offer free stuff um, and you know, it's not salesy it's it works well um, there's no reason why you can't send things to people now I appreciate there may be some difficulties physically with that but if you're going to the shops you can um, still post things on the way you can buy post online um, most businesses have a, a stock of stamps uh, but you could say go to the post office en route and buy stamps you can order stamps online physical stamps and get them sent to you so there are no reasons why you can't do that and we know that people engage with the post more than email anyway and in these interesting times I suspect they will engage even more make it really interesting how about telephoning all your existing customers it can't be difficult to do um, you know, it might be if you're being queued but most small businesses can phone customers and just if have a how are you doing conversation well, just to let you know we will be back or this is what we can do or I've just done this guide if you're interested I can send it to you so explore all the different media don't just get bogged down with sending people emails there's lots of things that you can do and WhatsApp groups, we've created a WhatsApp group with our, our mastermind uh, customers, a nice way of, of keeping with a community going on. And finally, my point is make a plan, um, you know, think about the scenarios coming up because it could well be this goes on for, you know, initially they said three weeks and I don't think anybody genuinely believed it was ever going to be three weeks. So, but what if it's three months? Um, you know, what can you do? What, what, how might those questions change? What can you do now to preempt that and not always be on, on the back foot? 
So I hope that's given you lots of food for thought. I always end my sessions, as I said before, with you know, what's the most useful thing you have learned today? Um, and I think that's a really important question because I'm hoping there's one, maybe two or three ideas there where you're asking yourself the question, how could I do that? What would my version of that be? Um, and I guess my final comment on the whole thing is don't fall into the trap of being one of those people who says, oh, that wouldn't work for me. My business is different. Um, there's adaptations, I'll grant you. you. You can't just copy what other people do, but there is an adaptation. Your business is not different. Uh, you're a human being, your customers are human beings. We're all in the same crisis. Uh, there is a way in which you can make this stuff work. So uh, the really best of luck with it. Um, I'm going to be coming back next time. Um, well, next week we're going to be covering video and CRM, just haven't decided in which order yet. So. So, um, but I'll make that decision very soon. Um, uh, have fun with it all and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.